we were looking at the at the menu here and we were adding uh, a menu item notice how the two things were linked we created a page which allowed us to then add a new menu item which was about about us and then we created a brand new menu to display um, the social media buttons. I don't know how many of the social networks this will automatically add the icon for. I don't know if you know you try to add Instagram. I think Instagram is going to be there. I don't know if Vine will be there or other social networks. You can try uh, to add them and see what happens. And that all depends on the theme. This theme is kind of smart enough to know that when you um, when you add a specific kind of address for a social network, it'll then show the icon. That's nice. Um, this is all of our sidebar right here. And in my case, I've also got a search. So WordPress has a built-in search feature so that when uh, someone types in a keyword, it searches inside the site. But notice also what's also in the uh, sidebar is this recent post, so forth and so forth. And then at the very bottom, we've got something called meta site admin and actually I'm gonna recommend to very early on remove this this is basically the front door to log into your site so that means anyone can go to your site if this was a real victor.com that would be right there log into the site admin and then they try to perhaps break your password so what we need to do here is edit this sidebar and remove this widget this is known as a widget I'm going to look at what those are in a moment. But I want to remove, I want to edit my sidebar so that it displays what I want it to instead of the default. And the default is actually something that I don't want. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the dashboard. We can find this under Appearance Widgets on the left side here, Appearance, and then Widgets. So this screen is a bit confusing. Let me tell you in general how it works, and then we'll, we'll work with it. Depending on your theme, this one says Widget Area. Add widgets here to appear in your sidebar. If you've got a different theme, you may have more than one widget area. I've worked with themes that have like seven of them because you can put something on the top left corner of the theme and something in the middle right side. You might have a top header widget area, you may have a left sidebar widget area and the right side widget area and a footer widget area. This one seems to only have a left widget sidebar area. On the left over here are the available widgets. Depending on your theme and other plugins, these are things we can add to a widget area. And on the right side, in this current widget area, these are the things that are currently listed. There's that search, there's the recent posts, recent comments, there's the meta. Click on the little triangle. Did that run out already? There's one. You can pass this back right here. It's going to come to you in just a moment. Um, the meta widget box, if you click the triangle, these widgets are going to have options. That's what the triangle is. And this one really only has one option, to give it a title. If you don't give it a title, it's just going to have the default title of meta, and then all of these. You can't go in and remove, I don't want it to show the site admin, but I do want it to show the wordpress.org. You can't edit that. It's all or nothing the meta widget is basically on or off. And I don't really think there's anything useful about that meta widget. So the way to rem one way to remove it is, right, you open a little triangle and then you click delete. And then it's gone. This, you have to be very careful because there's no undo for that. You can undo a post, you can, do, you can undo stuff in a post, you can undo stuff in a page and that sort of thing, but you can't undo in this section. So you have to be careful here. If you delete something, it's gone, except for a little trick that I'll show you in a moment. But we can rearrange these things also. Let's say I want categories to appear first. 
There's no button to save. Sometimes the WordPress interface is inconsistent here and there. When we were working with the menu, we, we worked with the menu and we clicked save. There's no save button here, really. Did you notice that when I rearranged this, a little spinning circle appeared for a moment? Right there? And then it went away? Right there? That's it, sh that's it showing you that it's uh, saving, and then it's, it's done saving. There's no real save button when you're rearranging it. Within a particular widget, you could have a save button. Let's search. It doesn't have any options, really. Recent posts, a few options. So, for example, um, recent posts. If we look at recent posts, we could give this a title. We could tell it how many posts to show at once. Display the post date. So if I turn on an option and then I save the widgets options, and then I visit site, now recent posts is going to also have a post date. I could sh make it show a variety of ones, or you know, I could call this section latest news. Instead of it saying recent posts, that's the default. I can change a title and it'll display that title instead of the default. So now if I look on the on the front end, that says latest news instead of recent posts. As I said, we've got the option to delete, but then that's pretty permanent. Another thing that we can do is, it's not obvious, but if you put your mouse over the, the word available widgets, you get an arrow right there. If you click that, it collapses that section, which I still need to explain. And then you've got another section called Inactive Widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. If I select it to delete, it would delete all of its settings. I'd have to recreate the widget, maybe waste time. Instead, if I drag the widget to the inactive area, it's going to remove it from the visible sidebar of the site, but save all of my settings. And if I need it again, I just drag it back to the widget area. When you drag it over, make sure that it's in the, the dotted box. If you don't see the dotted box, it's not, it's not going. It's got to be in a dotted box. If it doesn't appear, just wiggle around in there to find it. And now we've got uh, the latest news archived, made inactive in this inactive widget area. So if I, if I reopen the, wid uh, the available widgets, it says to activate a widget, drag it to a sidebar or click on it. To deactivate a widget and delete its settings, drag it back. So some of these widgets that we have are, we've already seen archive, this is a monthly archive of your site's posts. We can put a calendar in the sidebar, but that's going to be mo more of a calendar to show the days of the month where you posted something. It's not a, quite the calendar like for you to, to create an appointment or a reminder or anything like that. It's just going to be a list of the days of the month where you've added a post. Categories, custom menu, 
so we can do this just to experiment. I'm going to drag custom menu into the widgets area and then it says pick a title if you want and select a menu. So this is another way to add depending on your theme. If your theme doesn't allow you to put a menu where you want straightforwardly you could perhaps use a sidebar and add the custom menu and then say okay now put this menu in that widget in that sidebar. In our case it's gonna look weird because our theme has a way to show menu items how we want but notice that we've got the original menu and then I've got this one in there which is the same thing but I'm just showing this is pretty powerful this will make more sense if when you get more advanced uh, putting in a custom menu uh, let's say you're you don't have any more any more spaces to put a menu you could create a menu area like this for your for your items on sale. So actually I'm going to remove that one. There's the meta box, recent comments, recent posts, tag cloud. Tag cloud is just um, the tags that you've used on a on, on your posts. They're going to be listed there. That way a person can click on a keyword and find more of your content. There's the search box. So this particular theme doesn't have that many widgets. Other themes that I work with give you other cool kinds of widgets like a Twitter, a Twitter feed. You just drag the widget over and then you set it up so that it displays your Twitter feed, for example. But I will show you one of the most powerful but simple looking widgets is the text widget. This says, any arbitrary text or HTML. Let's play with this for a moment. Drag the text widget into the widget area. It wants a title, and then there's a block for you to write text. So you can write text like, um, join us on Monday for a sale. That's fine. You can also here, notice it says, any HTML. So if you know HTML, you can write some HTML, such as the HTML tag to make the word sale a link. So now what I've got here is this HTML code that will turn that into an active link. So if you know any CSS, you can write that in there as well. This code will get translated. The first one makes it a link. So the word sale is an active link, and it goes over to link.com. HR is a tag, is a bit of code to just make a little dividing line, a horizontal ruler. It makes a little division, a dividing line. And then over here, I wrote some code to put a pink background. So the color pink will be behind the words one day only. Does anyone have any experience with, C with HTML? A few people? So you can use that to your advantage. Um, I believe you can also I'd have to look it up, but you might be able to put in JavaScript here. So if you if you have some JavaScript ability, you might be able to put it here. I have to look it up, but I know HTML and CSS works here. So if I add some of that and save it, and now I go back to the front end, 
Look at that. Join us on Monday for a sale. And then that's an active link. And then the text, the pink color, goes behind. What I'm saying about this being so powerful is that uh, any valid code, HTML or CSS, can go here. You can also do something like, I'll show you in just a moment, I'm going to add a video. There's no widget here about adding a video. I can add a video, a YouTube video, for example, onto the site. Because most sites nowadays give you the code to their multimedia. YouTube, I'll show you right now, how to get the code to display a video on your site. Maybe you want a sound from a particular website. Most likely there's a way to embed, it's called the embed code. Most likely a site will give you the embed code. This displays code, so you just have to grab that code from that site, paste it into one of these text widgets, and then it'll display that multimedia. Yeah. Same thing with PowerPoint too, the limited page. You mean to display a PowerPoint here? Um, if you if you if you use the website slideshare.com and you first save your PowerPoint to slideshare.com, then that'll work. But you can't quite show a PowerPoint directly, so you'd have to upload it to slideshare.com first, and then you could. Is there a way on the link that we just did? Um, is there a way to make it so that it opens up separate from, so it does not deal with your website? Maybe. Maybe if you write that. So the, so the answer is yes. Yes, see this code that I wrote right here? I added to I added to the to the link, I added that part. Space, target equals blanks in, in quotes, and then <coughs> underscore. And that is the code way to make a brand new tab open up if there's no button that says open new link. Open link in new tab. All right, let me show you if, if you wanted to add a YouTube video. Uh, whatever you've got here, save this text box, and then you can, you can close it here. And then you can add more than one of these. So I'm going to add another text box. You can add two archives if you want. That would be weird, but you can add two search boxes if you want. It would let you do it, but it would be pretty useless. What's often useful is to use more than one text box because this is the code up here to do one thing and now what I want to do in this text box is display a video so maybe in the title I can I can write watch a video and then what I need to do is get the embed code for a video this is a two-part process I need to find the video copy its code and then I need to paste it into the text widget I need a text widget like this Let's go find a video. Let's go over to uh, the class's uh, YouTube channel. So we'll go over to youtube.com slash instructor Victor C. Don't forget the C. youtube.com slash instructor Victor C. This is the link that I that I sent people if you asked for the class videos. I'm gonna pick any any video at random when this loads up, not necessarily from this class, just to show you that uh, YouTube and basically every other multimedia site nowadays gives you a, a link to share a video. So let's say this one right here, the SEO class. If I uh, click, if you click on any video, down here you should have the buttons add to and share and more. If you click share, look for that icon that looks like a little ball being shared. That's the share button. You often see that on websites, although unfortunately it's not always that icon. For example, on Vimeo, it's another video site, a nice video sharing site that I like. Their sharing icon is a little paper airplane. 
So it's cute, but you people might not think what might not know what that is right away. It's often going to be that sort of sharing ball icon, whatever its meaning is. But if you click on share, it gives you the way to share to all of these networks, yes, and the link to the original video. But what we want is right here the embed code. This embed code gives you this line of code. If you click show more, you get options such as what size of the video and other options. I'm going to leave those alone, but you can experiment with them. Basically, this embed code, I want to copy. You know the trick that if you triple click something, it selects the whole line? Instead of you trying to select everything, dragging like that, you can try to triple click. One, two, three. That often selects the whole line there. Triple click. Copy that. So right click, copy. Do you need permission to do that to connect to if the video author did not want this to be shared, there would not be an embed option. So that, though, is not the best answer. Either way, uh, also because perhaps an author didn't know about turning that embed off, and then you share their video and they don't like it. So um, it's kind of uh, tricky to answer that simple question. Uh, but I would assume that if the embed code is there on a particular site, multimedia site, it's pretty fair game. I'm going to copy that code, and then if I go back to my site, I can paste that code. You might have paste or play, paste as plain text. Either or should work. Now that code that it gave us, that code is basically going to display your your video at these dimensions, allow full screen and border. So now if you save that and visit site, <coughs> we need to update our flash. But there is a there's a video there. If you don't see it right away, that's fine. Uh, it does work. This particular browser has a has the outdated Flash player, but I'm going to switch over to Google Chrome for a moment. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you that uh, the video does work. Did anyone see it directly? Here it is. So within the sidebar, which is already constrained, there's the video, which seems to be a little cut off, but uh, there's the video. It's a real video. It's not just an icon. How long do you leave the video? Just a moment. So if I click play, all right. So in my handout that we that we were looking at, so the video does uh, does show up as long as we use the embed code. Question. Someone had a question? Yes. Yeah, I switched over to Google Chrome and I went back to the website address, localhost slash WordPress. Uh, it seems that the Flash player on Google Chrome is more updated than the one we're using in the other browser, which is Opera. That's why it didn't load up. So I just went with Google Chrome to our site and it played. It has the ability to go full screen and everything. So the embed code, most sites nowadays give you the embed code. And then you can just copy that and paste it into your text widget. And now you've got that multimedia built into your site. So this is a big secret right here that I'm imparting you. You don't need to upload your, your videos and sounds and all of that to your own server. You don't have to use up your own server, your own bandwidth and all of that on your own GoDaddy. You can upload your videos to YouTube. You can also upload videos to this site you may or may not have heard of, Vimeo.com. It's like YouTube, but honestly a little bit more snobbish in that 
they don't play ads on the videos. People that post stuff here, I believe they post stuff a little more professional. They um, take more time in crafting the videos. There's also a paid version of it, so again, a little more exclusionary, but uh, I like Vimeo. I post some of my stuff there. Um, they also have the embed code, and like I said here, their little embed icon is a paper airplane. So you can put your video on YouTube, you can put your video on Vimeo, maybe you have a sound, an interview that you recorded. Instead of, taking up, instead of it taking up space on your server, you can upload it to SoundCloud. SoundCloud is like, a, it's like the YouTube for sound. You create a free profile, you upload your sounds there, and then you have an embed code. So people upload their, their music, or interviews, or whatever sound, and you'll get the embed code, like this sound here, there's share, embed, and it's going to look like that. It's going to have like an album art graphic, and then the person can play the, the sound on your site. You don't have to use up your site's resources to display your multimedia. That's usually what you have, a video or sound. I mentioned a moment ago PowerPoint. So the YouTube of PowerPoint is a site called slideshare.com. You create a free profile, you upload your PowerPoints, then people can comment on them, share them, you can embed them and not, sh and not use up well, slideshare.net, actually. You don't have to use up your resources, you use their resources. And yes, the problem is that if slideshare crashes, then your presentation is no longer on your site. If YouTube crashes, then yeah, the video is not on your site. It relies on that connection. But same thing, if your server crashed, and your videos were there, you lost the video anyway. This might be interesting. Building a social media marketing plan. 1,829 views. Historically, online marketing was a fairly one-sided... So it can, be, uh, it can be the kind of a slide uh, presentation like a classic uh, PowerPoint that it's, you know, kind of static slide, slide by slide. Or you can also upload, apparently, videos. This, I think, is pretty new. I haven't seen this very recently, that you can have a whole video on SlideShare, but um, seems pretty useful. Pro. People share so much information on social media, we can buy some of the most targeted advertisements available on the web. Looking to sell... So this one has the little arrow for share. And you got right here, embed. So I can embed that PowerPoint, that, that um, presentation, onto my site. So I think those are the big ones. Um, you can put PDFs here as well and share a PDF that way. Yes? Slide share, could you use it every, anywhere can see it? Um, hmm. I haven't used it very recently. There's probably options to make things private. Okay. Uh, and if not, worst case scenario is that there's probably like an extra paid feature to make private accounts. That's sometimes what I see with some sites. Like there's a site for sharing code that I like to use. For the free account, your code is public to everyone. If you pay $9 a month, then you can have private code, so only your team members can work on it. And possibly this SlideShare is like that. I haven't really looked into it. Uh, but there should be some functionality to have public and private presentations. So, the embedded gives you the embedded that shows it on yours. The other code that it showed before that, that's just a link. So if you put that on it, you'll have to just click on the link. Yeah. So if you want the, the content to be visible right, with, right on your page, that's usually an embed code. And if you add the link, the person has to jump through one more hoop. Now, I also notice here, uh, more sites are also sh showing you WordPress-specific code. So either or should work, 
but if there's a WordPress short code, you know, they specifically have given you code that works best with WordPress. So look for that on sites. If you have if you have a WordPress short code, I would use a WordPress short code. Yes. Uh, would you also be able to put it like like let's say your blog post or Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so right now we've just been looking at adding it to a text widget, but oftentimes when you have some sort of short code, WordPress short code, you can the embed should also work. You can add it to the post directly or the page. I can go over to the about page add the short code here and it'll display the presentation in the about page too. I'm sorry, so you were in SlideShare and how did you get to that? A product to a new mom? Let's Facebook say you're looking at a presentation, okay. number one. And then at the bottom left corner, they use a little arrow here. That's the share button. YouTube had, that, has, had those two little balls being shared. Uh, they've got a little arrow. You click there and it's going to give you the code and I recommend to use the WordPress short code to embed this slide on your site. Okay, so um, we were talking about new post, uh, a page, media. Let's go to 1D, change your WordPress theme. We've looked at this briefly before, but now we can, uh, we can do it again. If we go back to the dashboard. We go to themes under appearance. Let's go to appearance and then themes. So we've got three built in themes 2015, 2014, and 2013. So let's select. 20, well, hover over 2013, and then you get the option activate. So hover over, hover over 2013 theme and click activate, and then visit site. How did you get mm -hmm. When we go to visit site, now the design of um, the site has changed completely. Notice the, the navigation bar is horizontal instead of vertical. The Twitter and Facebook icon disappeared. There's the, the home content. There's the footer. Notice this has more of a footer and it's in columns. There's search. There's that text widget. There's the video, and then at the bottom, proudly powered by WordPress. So, and then the search is right there. So this is a, a different theme. If you go over to the About Us, notice it also rearranged the order of these. I used to have Home, and actually, where did the word Home go? We'll fix that in a moment. But it put About Us, and then From Our Kitchen, and then the blog. So the content is still there. There's the picture and text. There's the blog still there. There's no home button, but if you click on the title of your site, it takes you back home. So this is a from your kitchen. You can click on that. Yes. So the content is still there. Um, all of this content is basically being saved in the database. The database that we created at the beginning of the day, the database we create every time, everything's being saved. The database. 
So there's a field in the database that says theme equals number one, which might have been 2015. And then now we changed it with the click of a button. Now the database says theme equals number 12. So a different theme was changed where everything else stays the same, basically. It did change the menus and all of that, which we'll fix in a moment. But this is, an, again, a, another one of the great things about WordPress. You can switch themes easily, and the content pretty much transfers over. You still might have to massage it a little bit, like we need to do here. But um, the ability to change a, de a design completely is one of the great selling points of WordPress. So let's fix this menu. This menu doesn't exactly look like the one on the other side, and this often happens. The menu is often the casualty of switching between themes. We'll see why right now. Hover over the name of the site and go to Menus. And we've got Edit Menus, Manage Locations. This is the social menu. And notice this particular theme only has one location for a menu, the navigation menu. There isn't even a menu for the social buttons. Mine says I'm editing the social. You might be editing main, so stay there. I want to switch over to the main menu. So if yours says social, click on main menu, and click select. So here's the menu that we designed earlier that says home, about us, and our blog, but we're not using it anywhere. If this is not checked on, it may show no menu, or it may show an arbitrary menu of all your pages in alphabetical order, which might be totally wrong according to your needs. So one of the things early on, make a note, when you switch themes, go check out the menu screen and make sure it's set up how you expect. So what we need to do here is say use the main menu in the navigation menu. Turn that checkbox on, navigation menu, and then save. And then visit site. We lost it because this particular theme, this theme authors, or authors, never designed a space for that. So they, there's no space for us to put it in. And this is an old theme, <laughs> literally 2013. So now if I visit site, you can do it in a slightly different way. I'll get to that, but. We've got home and about us in our blog. So now the menu behaves like I expected. For the social media, what we could do to this menu is add the social media ourselves. If I go back to edit this main menu, Now on the main menu, I've got uh, Home, About Us, Our Blog, and Facebook, custom link. We're not going to get the cute icon, but we will have the link, at least. Right sure. If you go back to the menus, to add a Facebook link, it's going to be a custom link. So under custom links here, you type in the address of Facebook or Twitter or whatever. You type in the, the words that you want to appear, Facebook, add to the menu and save, and now you've got a, multimedia, uh, a social media link on your menu.
So whenever you type that custom link, you have to remember to add to menu and also save menu. You could do something like this. I'm going to add a custom link, and on the URL, I'm going to delete it and just put social. The point of this, actually, no, we can't delete it. We have to put the pound symbol. So watch this trick, and then I'll explain it. I put in the social, and then I can put these underneath it. What I'm doing there is, now I've got a menu item that says social, and if I hover over it, it drops down to Twitter and Facebook. Let me show you what I did. My trick is that if I create a custom link and the address, delete the address completely and just put a pound symbol, which is shift three, that sort of creates like a fake link. It's like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. And I need to do this in order to trick the WordPress menu system to display an item in the menu, which then I can name my social. So with this with the pound symbol now it lets me add it and what I can do is move the social media menu items indented if they're indented that means that they will be drop-down items now be careful because you could put a sub item in a sub item and now right there you'll have Twitter inside of Facebook, inside of my social. How did you, how did you step those down? Just drag them over. See if I click and drag to the right, they should eventually so indent. If you, go, if you go ahead and create like a Facebook one, dot com impact, you interactive? Yeah. Add to menu from there? Add to menu, yes. And then you adjust it once it gets over there. That's right. Okay. Cool. Yes. When you're when you're on your homepage that's under Victor's decorating, where it says just another WordPress or WordPress site. Are you able to omit them? Yes, uh, I don't remember if we mentioned it last time. Uh, I'll mention it where, it where that is in just a moment. Let me finish with the menus here. Any last questions about the menu? So as I, I said, I, yes. No, I tend to do that my social. I've got Facebook. They're still, you, you mean they're still on the same menu? They're not under my social? Yeah, mine have their own buttons too, but they don't appear until I hover over my social. Well, that's what I showed a moment ago, that what you need to do is create a new custom link, and then under the URL put the pound symbol, and then type my social. So as I said, the, the menu is oftentimes the first casualty of switching themes. It doesn't know. You might have a a theme location in a particular theme that doesn't exist on another theme. So it just either shows no menu or it shows all your pages alphabetically. So always check your menus when you switch between themes. Now as for fixing that just another WordPress site, that's going to be under the settings general. And I, I thought we talked about this, but I might have did an, done it in another class. Did I mention the tagline? No. Hmm. 
Well, that's where you change it. So instead of it saying just another WordPress site, you can put in a tagline here, which is good to write one sentence. And again, thinking about it in SEO, what can I write here that people might be searching for? And it does behoove you to use the tagline to explain your company, especially if your company's name might be a little esoteric. Like, what does PMD Interactive do? Well, it, we then use the tagline to explain social media, marketers, web designers in San Diego, or, or whatever. So the tagline is useful to explain your site, especially if your title, site title doesn't quite explain what you do. When you make this change, remember at the very bottom to select Save. You only see this when you're logged in. Notice how the top bar here reminds us that we're logged in. Howdy admin. So if someone visits your site um, that is not logged in, they won't see that. Here I am in a different web browser where I'm not logged in. There's no bar up here, and therefore there's no edit button. Wanted certain people to, to have a password or a page. How would you do that? A page or a post? Or a page. Alright, so if you go over to the pages screen, and let's say we only want people to have certain people to have access to the about page. If you hover over any of your pages, you have Edit and Quick Edit. Select Quick Edit. Password. Oh, password right here. So whatever password we write right here, then you have to make sure, the password. <laughs> make sure they have the password. It's not the best system. It's 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 a basic system that that works overall. Uh, but for real, for a more powerful system, you would use a plugin. And we'll get to what more plugins a little later. But this might be enough. Okay, so, um, yes? Well, just to con yeah, just to confirm, uh, you're doing a custom link and you're adding the pound sign to the URL? What? Yeah, in the main menu here, and then also you want to confirm at the bottom that you've activated the theme location navigation menu. If you didn't, if you don't tell WordPress where to use this menu, it'll ignore it. 
So if nothing is checked on under theme locations, check on the first option, save it, and see if that works. What's that? So we looked at uh, the menu system. It's very powerful and useful. Uh, we switched over to another theme. We got practice resurrecting our site. That was a big one, which we'll need to do again next week. But first, as we wrap up very soon, we're going to need to archive this site again. We're going to need to save our work at this point, which we'll do together. And then when we come back next time, we're going to resurrect the site. So I'll take final questions, and then we'll do the duplicate, and then we'll get into lab time. Any final questions on things we've talked about so far? Okay, so I want to save, I want to make a, an archive of this site, like we did last week. Notice if you scroll down to duplicator here. Question there, ladies? Question? Yep. We're going to go over to duplicator and then select packages. This is coming from my sheet number four. So under packages here, at the top right, I will select to create new. And so this should say today's date. It's going to create a file with today's date. One thing that's useful that they actually changed recently, there was an option in Duplicator to also write yourself a note, a note as in what what's contained in this archive, or what are you, why are you saving it, or what is going to be accomplished next. So I use this, as I've said, my company uses this for real clients. We save the site, make a perfect copy of it. One reason why we might is, let's say we've got an e-commerce site and we're going to make a bunch of changes, new prices or products or whatever. We would make an archive copy, make those changes, and if there's any problems, we can revert back, we, we can resurrect the site again. So just by having a date on the file isn't very user-friendly sometimes because then I don't know what, what did I do here again. So the option that we have here that now is an extra click is to add a note. On the, on the side here, if you click Notes, it just gives you a simple box to write notes, whatever you want here. So you could write what you've done or what you will do or any notes. So I'm going to say here, what are the big things that we did? We, uh, we changed theme, edited menu, embedded video, And then uh, what I like to do is then write to do. So what else is 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 pending for next time? Um, updates. So I'll talk in detail next time about updates because there's been an update that's been here nagging us the whole time, and there might be updates later on as we keep working. So what I need to do is updates to the site. What I also want to do is add jetpack plugin again I'll explain what that is next time but I want to add this very cool plugin called jetpack and briefly a, a plugin is some little mini app that adds more features to your WordPress such as the duplicator plugin there was no built-in duplicator feature with the built-in WordPress we had to add the plugin we did it last time, we'll add more plugins next time to remind you how to do that. But one of the ones I recommend is called Jetpack. 
we use this with our clients and we'll install it together and I'll explain how it works and such next time. But those are some of my to-do items. If you want to make yourself any other notes here, you're free to do so. I usually keep this file name because it has the name of the site as well as the date. And I like that format the way the date is because when you deal with computers, computers can organize files really well if you follow the right format. If you had called your file name, you know, like uh, the month and then the the day and then the year, that kind of organization is not as useful because the computer will organize everything as 0, 6, etc. and then 0, 7, etc. So it could be organized, you've got 0, 6, 23, 2015 and next you've got 0, 6, 23, 2011. So if you have your dates like that, they will always be in order. It'll have the year first, always. So the 2011 stuff will be higher and then the 2015 stuff will be lower, in order. And then the month comes next because obviously January to December, those months come in that order, and then the days of the month. So I grew up, of course, like many of us perhaps, I went to U.S. schools, we wrote month, day, year. And I still write that in my checks and so forth. But when I deal with computers, I try to write year, month, date, really because this is going to save you hassle when you've got files to organize. All of the years will be in order, and then the months and then the days. If we do it this way, a 2011 file could be mixed in with a 2012 file and a 2017 file that all start with a 06. So I would recommend to leave that date scheme. Click Next. It's going to scan the site, hopefully no problems and then build. Let me back up a moment before we finish on that. If you took my site from the network folder at the beginning of the day, there was a folder in there that I call 2015-06-16. And in that folder, it had the installer file and the PHP and the zip file. So that's what was just created right here. The installer file, the, P, the zip file, 2015, Victor's Bakery, blah, 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 dot zip. That's what's, that was what was from last week. So what I'm going to do in the network folder is create a brand new folder. Don't do this, but in the network folder, I'm going to create a folder with today's date, which is the 22nd. Day is it today? 22nd. And I'm going to put a copy of today's installer file and zip file in the network folder in just a moment. For yourself, if you want to take our work for you to work with at home, you're going to click on the installer button and it pops up over here. It downloaded. And then you're going to click on the archive, and it shows you up there that it downloaded. Those two files probably were saved to your desktop. You can find them if you click that little target, show in folder. It shows you right here. Oh, it went to my downloads, actually. So there's that zip file, there's that installer file. you probably want to create a folder there with today's date and these two files that it downloaded you want to put them in that folder and take that folder with you I'll put a copy of those files of mine in the network folder in just a moment you can get a copy of my files if you want today when we come back next time you can continue to use your files we're going to do the, the duplicate of resurrection again together, or you can use my files. So you can take the PHP and zip file and put them in another folder that you create, right? With today's date, yes. And then you put that on your script.
Exactly. So that's basic file management there, and if you want a copy of your items, that's what you want to do. You want to copy them to your flash drive. I put them in a folder because if you just toss them on your flash drive, notice every time it's going to create something called installer. It's not going to put a new date on it. So if you already had in your flash drive an installer file and you're dragging this one into it, it's going to replace the one from last week. You can have a broken site. So that's why I'm creating a folder for today, and I had a folder for last week, and I'll create a new folder for next week, and on each of these folders I'm gonna put in that day's work. And that's our process that we do for our clients. We have a folder with their backups, and we have a perfect copy of their site, and if any problems happens, if GoDaddy crashes, we can resurrect the site. If we need to make big changes to the site, we can do it in WAMP, before we put it live, um, so this is all coming from sheet four. We're going to wrap up the lecture and then we're going to have some lab time, but is there are there any general questions on what we did today? Did you just update your folder? We can take it. I think so. <laughs> Yes, I've got today's stuff. All right, so when we come back next time, we will get on schedule and um, look at plugins and so forth.